Uh, hello, everyone, and welcome to Reflections Upon the Precious Book Divine. My name is Rick Pope Joy, and I have the distinct privilege and the wonderful pleasure to join you today in this, uh, well, this beautiful study hall. That's what we refer to reflections as. It is a study hall, and hopefully my chair will be just fine <laughs> as I'm already having to start out readjusting uh, my chair. So, uh, well, if you're on the radio with us today on uh, the Gospel Radio Network, you did not just see that. But uh, if you're on Facebook Live uh, uh, with us, then uh, you had to uh, uh, you had to witness the uh, readjustment of the chair, and there ain't nothing wrong with that. Sometimes uh, equipment just does not function, and so. Uh, but it's always good to have my fellow Bible students with me, and today is always a special day for me because uh, it is Open Mic Friday. Now we do have a hot topic uh, that we are uh, uh, dealing with that is uh, from a hot, uh, it might not be a hot potato, but uh, it is something that is very important and very valuable uh, to uh, the church today, and that is the topic of evangelism. And in particular, uh, this is an open conversation on evangelism. And uh, I have sent out some uh, notes in regards to uh, some individuals, I hope, that have time to join us today. Uh, so hopefully we will have some individuals that will be able to join us, uh, not only on uh, uh, our Facebook uh, Live in regards to the uh, 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 video, but hopefully uh, we will get some phone calls in relationship to that as well. I see that our Bible students are already coming into class, and uh, that is always uh, a good sign. I always appreciate and value uh, your comments in uh, relationship to things. I always learn a lot, especially on Open Mic uh, Friday. Normally on Open Mic Friday, Brother Mike Bonner uh, is here with us. Uh, uh, we were not able to make uh, contact uh, this week, but I know he's been very, very busy, and uh, so I have uh, uh, tried not to uh, 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 bother him, And uh, uh, but uh, if he has time, he will uh, give us a call or come and see us at the same time. Uh, so this is an open conversation about evangelism uh, today. That's how I wanted to advertise this. Uh, I am interested in uh, uh, your thoughts in regards to the practicality of evangelism, the practicality of bringing them in. I'm interested in uh, what you are doing, how you are doing it, and uh, anything else in relationship to that that we can uh, uh, be so hoping that uh, all of us and uh, have some uh, very valuable edification today uh, from uh, this program. So this is, as I mentioned earlier, Reflections Upon the Precious Book Divine, Study Hall for the Brave, for the Spiritual-Minded Bible Student. That is, we make absolutely no apologies for what God says, or we make no apologies for how God chose to say it. It, it would be presumptuous of us to do so, and... Uh, uh, so uh, that's exactly, we're, we're not going to be presumptuous, not, not in relationship to God, my friends. You do not want to be found in that boat. And so we're going to let God say it, and we're going to let God say it the way he wanted to say it. And that's, uh, that's what Reflections is all about. And so I hope that you are prepared and poised uh, to meditate, to study that now listen, if you're a friend that has where this broadcast originates, I want you to come, I want you to feel free to come and join us at the Nesbitt Church of Christ, 685 Nesbitt Road, Nesbitt, Mississippi. You're going to find the Nesbitt Church of Christ. And uh, we would love to have you. You'd be our honored. We meet every our opportunity of study. Uh, our opportunity of worship, and we meet every Wednesday night uh, for study at 7 p.m. Uh, I see that uh, uh, Sister Ferris and Miss Mona and Sister Jensen and uh, Brother Javon Jesse 
Uh, Brother Furness has all joined us as well as others I see, and uh, so good to have you. Uh, those are all individuals that have joined us on the uh, Facebook Live uh, uh, aspect of this. And so uh, if you'd like to leave a comment, uh, then you can do so on the Facebook Live. You just need to look up uh, uh, my name. It's under uh, my, uh, my Facebook account, and that's just simply Rick Popejoy. Uh, and, uh, or you can go to the TGRN side at the Gospel Radio Network, uh, dot org. And uh, you can chat with us there on the radio side. If you're listening to us via WJHF 106.9 FM in the Florence, Alabama area, we're grateful that you've chosen to listen to us on that uh, venue. And we ask that you go by. If you have time, please make time. Please make time to go by and see our family and friends at the Jackson Heights Church of Christ. Now, the phone number today, remember, this is number one. Uh, a live call-in broadcast. We generally do not emphasize that. I'm going to try to do a little bit more of that today. Uh, the phone number today is 405-428-2440. Once again, that is 405-428-2440. You'd like to remember this. The program. And, uh, it but if uh, you call in or you make a comment that it uh, uh, primarily refers to the uh, aspect of uh, this open conversation on evangelism, but it is Open Mic Friday. And uh, so uh, anything can happen on Open Mic Friday. Uh, and uh, so I see that some of y'all are driving and we'll be listening. And uh, let's see here. Miss Mona says, do you have any suggestions for specifics during this lockdown situation? Uh, that is, I think, an excellent uh, question. And we're going to be talking about uh, some aspects in uh, uh, relationship uh, to that. So uh, I definitely want to uh, want us to uh, be able to deal with uh, that aspect as well. So let's see here. Uh, let me unlock. I'm going to unlock uh, my meeting just in case uh, uh, we have somebody that wants to come in. I want to make sure that they have free access uh, to that uh, on the invitation side uh, for uh, the uh, WebEx that I utilize. All right. Well, let's see here. Uh, uh, I do want to, uh, I know we have, uh, normally we have a song uh, and we have a uh, uh, a prayer. Uh, I do have a song that I want us to uh, uh, enjoy, and uh, I've got a couple of them. If I uh, need uh, uh, to pull one up here in a minute, I'll do so. Uh, but uh, uh, there's a couple of beautiful songs that I think will fit right in on uh, the aspect of evangelism. But I do want us to go to our Heavenly Father in prayer uh, before we get started with our conversation. Almighty God and Father in heaven, as we come before thee at this time, we do thank thee for the night's rest, for the safety of our sleep, for the beauty of this day. We thank thee for the, uh, the time, the ability, the opportunity we have uh, to be thy servants in thy kingdom. Uh, we realize, our Heavenly Father, that there are uh, times of evangelism and uh, times of edification and times in which uh, uh, we are engaged in uh, activities of worship and uh, activities of taking care of uh, uh, our families and our jobs and things such as that. But we realize our Heavenly Father underlying all of that is our basic fundamental Christian responsibility. And uh, that is the most powerful evangelistic tool uh, that we have is that we live what we preach and we preach what we live. We're so thankful, our Heavenly Father, for all of our Bible students, those that are listening to us uh, uh, either live or will catch this program later. We're mindful of all of all, all of those, our Bible students that join us. Uh, we ask that you be with Sister Jensen as she is uh, uh, driving, that she might have safe travels, all of those that uh, are listening to our program. And uh, we ask that you would uh, uh, grant them safe journeys and uh, that they might arrive at their destination safely. All of those who are going through difficulty 
uh, difficult times, those who are in the hospital, those who are in, especially in need of our uh, care and concern. I pray, our Heavenly Father, that uh, we might be utilized as thy tool, uh, not just to evangelize, but uh, in every aspect of service that we might be to our family, friends, and our community. We're so thankful, our Heavenly Father, for the gift of thy Son, Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, he was brutalized. Uh, he was uh, uh, scourged, and he was crucified upon a cross. Uh, something maybe that our modern mind can't wrap ourselves around of the cruelty of humanity uh, toward uh, thy son and our savior. But our heavenly father, we pray and we give thee thanks. And uh, we realize our heavenly father that we did not deserve the gift, but we are so appreciative of that gift. We ask that you would be with uh, uh, each of uh, those that are going out into the world. It's in Jesus name that we pray. Amen. All right. Uh, well, that's uh, uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, uh, give you this song here, and uh, I think it will help set our minds right for our lesson today. He paid the price on Calvary. His sacrifice set me free. And in his death I made alive, covered by in his blood, God satisfied. And when he rose to sit on time, no more my soul will ever die. I will rejoice and ever plead to Jesus Christ, my Lord and King. And in his death I made alive, covered by his blood, God satisfied. And you, my friend, can also share the love and grace that proves he cares. The love God shows is given free. He died for you, he died for me. And in his death I made alive, covered by his blood, God satisfied. And in his death I made alive, covered by his blood, God satisfied. All right, my friends, uh, again, uh, that's uh, one of those songs that you just got to you got to love and appreciate, and uh, I'm sure we'll get to uh, uh, more of those as uh, the program uh, uh, goes along. And uh, but uh, uh, I, I, listen, the topic today is one that is oftentimes misunderstood, I, and I say misunderstood. I mean it's misunderstood from this vantage point that we seem to think today, and I don't know when this came about but we seem to think today that we've got to have a program to evangelize. And uh, the idea of a, a program of evangelism is not bad. I'm not, I'm not knocking the concept of a program, but I'm going to pray whether or not we have a program of prayer or not. Uh, I'm going to uh, uh, sing uh, songs of uh, praise and adoration to my God, whether we have a, a, a program for that or not. Uh, I'm going to uh, uh, call up my brethren and encourage them and be with them, whether we have a program or not. You see, number one, and I think this is so important that we realize, if, if we just, the most practical element of all in evangelism, is that we understand that uh, it is a first and foremost a practical, ev uh, a personal event. That is, it, it is it is accomplished by a person. Uh, I, I realize that we can do it collectively. I mean, I have uh, I, I I direct campaigns uh, all across the United States. I mean, we've been from uh, Michigan to Texas to uh, uh, Oklahoma to. Uh, uh, Virginia and uh, places such as that, all, all, a lot of places in between. 
we have been to a lot of places and we do that as an organized effort. Nothing wrong with that. I assure you that I love the time that I can spend with my brethren, focusing uh, my whole attention on a particular area together to help strengthen that area. I love that. Uh, but that's not, uh, you know, if if I saw that as that's evangelism, what I do here is I just live. That, that's not evangelism. That's evangelism. No, that's a part of my evangelistic endeavors. And uh, it, it, it I have to be uh, evangelist. That's why I wanted to uh, lead with that song, a person who understands that uh, God was satisfied with the cross, with the sacrifice of Jesus, and uh, how I can be satisfied. I am brought into the presence of God uh, because of that. Why wouldn't I want to tell the story? Why wouldn't I want to share that with my neighbors, with my friends uh, on a regular? Why wouldn't I want to be excited and talk about the things of Christianity. You know, uh, I'm excited about what takes place at the local assembly. I'm excited about our Bible studies. I'm excited about uh, 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 the things that, you know, if we could get, maybe I saw a little meme just the other day that said, uh, uh, well, you know, we could, uh, we'd do a whole lot better at, at Christians of, of bringing people in if we as excited as excited uh, for our worship as we were for our football. And uh, the response was, well, I don't know. I tried that one time. He says, well, what do you mean? He said, the, the preacher had a great sermon, so I took a Gatorade bottle and poured it over him. Well, they didn't ask me back. Uh, you know, well, listen, I'm not talking about uh, engaging in that kind of uh, activity, but I am talking about, are, do we really appreciate and value uh, what we have in Christ. Let's, let's talk about it with other people. Let's find opportunities uh, to be able to address. To me, that's the one of the most fundamental aspects. I don't care if it's your family. By the way, my sons and I, even my daughters and I, uh, unfortunately, they turned out to be Green Bay Packer fans, but uh, uh, I'll, uh, I'll just have to forgive that in them. But, uh, um, uh, I, you know, the, the, we talked football, we talked basketball, we talked sports uh, all the time. We, we would go to the game. I would watch them in their game. Sometimes we'd get a little loud and, and aggravated at the game. But, uh, you know, we went to the game and they participated in the game. Sometimes I would coach the game. And then we would go home in the car and we'd still be talking about the game. And and then we might get we're we're having supper or we're having – uh, some kind of meal, and, and we're still talking about the game. And then we'd go into the living room, and there'd be a, a football game on or a sporting uh, event on, and we'd do we'd talk about uh, – uh, I wasn't going to mention those Oklahoma Cowboys, but they are doing pretty good, I understand, uh, even though I'm not watching any of it right now. But uh, they we would talk about – we would watch it, and then we would talk about every play. You know, we'd have that pause button and uh, – uh, we'd talk about that play. We'd talk about that ref and that call and that coach and why they did this, why that, why that linebacker went that direction. No, we were excited about that. We wanted, we wanted to talk about those things. Those were things that were valuable to our conversation. They brought us together as a, uh, as a group of people, a family. You see, we had well, now we had a lot of discussions about a lot of things because. Uh, that's what we were interested in, you see. And uh, so the same is true with regards to Christianity. Are, are we, do we have this? Uh, that's the mentality that I'm talking about. D does it have the same value in our mindset to uh, uh, go from, uh, uh, here's the way I have uh, uh, seen this happen in, in the past. Not criticizing any of this, but but to say maybe we ought to, what, what did you study about in your Bible class today? Well, we studied about Jesus. Oh, okay, well, that's good. What about Jesus did you learn? He's our Savior. Oh, that's so great. And then 
from that vantage point, that's as, that's as far as we go with regards to that. Yet in that football game, in that soccer game, in that basketball game, I wanted to know all of these kind of things, right? And uh, so uh, uh, we had a much more in-depth uh, a conversation about these things uh, rather than a, an in-depth and uh, more personal conversation about the things that were going on and uh, in Christ. And uh, maybe we need to have more conversations such as that uh, with other people. Uh, oh man, you just you you wouldn't believe what the preacher preached on this past Sunday. Uh, so you know, sometimes we're looking for uh, openers and closers, right? Uh, what what an opener! <laughs> you know, some by the way, some people ain't interested in what your preacher said Sunday morning. I understand that. Some people are. And what an opener! You know, man, you wouldn't believe what oh. Uh, uh, whatever his name is, your preacher said. You wouldn't believe what old Bonner said down there, uh, our preacher this Sunday morning, and 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 why we need to uh, uh, do this and that. And uh, 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 so, uh, by the way, I'm 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 reading a text right here, and uh, uh, let's see, I'm on. Uh, this is a text in relationship to uh, uh, this right here. So we're we're about to get a phone call. And uh, we're about to have a conversation with a couple of uh, uh, wonderful gospel preachers. In fact, I'm going to put them online right now. And I believe on the line I have Brother Michael Light. And uh, who else is there with you, Brother Michael? Well, I've got Brother Terry Jackson, who you know has been very, very ill the last six, seven months. And it's, uh, it is great to be sitting here with a John Wayne cup in hand and a cup of coffee talking to <laughs> All right, Brother Terry, good good to good to hear from you. It's good to hear from you. All right. Well listen, uh, uh you have certainly been in our prayers, and I'm gonna ask something of you guys because of the phone. I'm just gonna ask that you speak up. And uh that's all I'm gonna ask uh in relationship to that. Now we've been talking about evangelism, and Michael, one of the points, I don't know if uh, y'all probably not been listening uh where you are, but uh one of the points that I've been making is one of the most practical points of uh, of evangelism is that it has to be personal. It, it has to uh, it it has to be a part of everything that we we are, and uh, uh, it's not just a program out here. It is something that uh, well, uh, brother Terry, I'll, I'll tell you a story. A friend of mine in Ardmore, Oklahoma. I told this the other day uh, online, but. Uh, uh, he had diabetes really bad, and they were going to have to take off his leg. And uh, I went up to visit him in the hospital uh, uh, almost every day. And uh, he was one of the most encouraging brothers I think I've ever met. And I talked to him and said, oh, Rick, he said, you don't understand. I, I've got more evangelism opportunities here in the hospital than I've got anywhere else. I've got doctors coming by to see me that I get to tell about Jesus and the Lord's church. I've got nurses checking on me 24 seven. And he said, yes, sir. That's part of why I told you. I'm gonna have Terry tell you his story. He, had, he was just here discussing the very same thing. And it also includes the chaplain. So I wanted him to kind of give you a little rundown of how it went up there in uh, Waco for six months. Awesome. We're all ears, brother. Well, of course, you know, at the CCH or the rehab center that they put me in, I had no contact with anyone outside of the the uh, people involved in that in that uh, facility. Yeah. Anyway, the only ones that I got to contact in three months was the nurses, doctor, and the chaplain. And uh, the chaplain started coming in there, and so he and I had several interesting. Bible studies, the nurses finding out that I was a preacher, they started asking questions, and I had several Bible studies with them, and uh, and it's amazing, one of the questions I'd ask all the nurses, what is there in your life that scares you the most? Mm. Not a one of them said COVID, not a one of them said the, 
the riots there in New York, every one of them had personal fears and concerns. May have been financial, may have been about family, but they were all personal. But I got them. It's, it's 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 a rich evangelism field. You know, it cert it certainly is, and uh, uh, taking advantage of that is one of the important things, isn't it? I can say, Rick, as we as we think about those things, usually, you know, we're praying that so and so get well and get out of the hospital. Mm. It might be kind of interesting and angle to put on that. Pray that while so and so's in the hospital, to bring souls and need the gospel to his bedside. Amen. Amen. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to figure some way to get y'all a, a little bit uh, higher up. Uh, that's excellent, and uh, uh, I'm so glad uh, Terry's uh, home now. Uh, but at the same time. One of the points is the fact that we can use any opportunity, any right. opportunity. Uh, and, and in fact, most of the evangelism done in the first century, and, and Michael, I know y'all got to go and y'all got some good discussion. Uh, y'all have a cup of coffee for the rest of us. And uh, Brother Terry, love you. Love you, Rick. All right. We'll see y'all later. All right. Uh, I, I hope that you could hear that. I know that... Uh, uh, it was uh, it was a little hard. Preaching Texas has been really interesting and uh, has not been able to uh, has not been able to uh, uh, be out and about. Has about three or four visitors uh, in regards to the the doctors, the nurses, and then the chaplain, and and how he said that. Uh, uh, you know, he would just talk to them and uh, ask them, you know, what scares you the most? And he would say, you know, it wasn't COVID. Uh, that didn't scare them the most. Uh, but uh, that's that's one of those openers that we have in regards to that. And uh, so, uh, by the way, the next phone call, if we get another phone call today, I'll put it a little closer and stand it up. And uh, uh, Miss Mona said it was a little better at that point. But I want to I want to draw your attention to scripture of uh, what brother Terry and uh this other brother of ours uh you know Paul was in prison. Uh and uh in uh the book of Philippians he talks a little bit about that uh prison sentence uh that he had. And it wasn't a poor me. Now listen, prison is never a good place to be, but uh I want you to notice if you're there, you're there. And he says in Philippians chapter one and verse number 12, but I, I would, you should understand brethren that the things which have happened unto me have fallen out rather unto the furtherance of the gospel. In other words, if I've got to be here, then uh, these people are going to hear about the gospel. In fact, he says in verse number 13, here's the furtherance so that my bonds in Christ are manifested in all the palace in all other places. Now, the word palace there is the ideal of the praetorium guard or the Caesar's court. Uh, and if you tie that in to Philippians chapter four, then you're going to have this, in verse number 20, uh, well, let's begin in verse number 22. All the saints salute you chiefly, they that are of Caesar's household. You know, for the gospel to get to Caesar's household was an interesting uh, 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 journey. 
uh, for it to get to Caesar's courtyard was an interesting journey. It probably was not the manner in which Paul thought it would get there, but it got there anyway. It got there through the difficulty of the situation that Paul and others found themselves in. In other words, using whatever comes your way to talk to people about the things that matter most to them. Why wouldn't we think that our neighbor, now I realize that not everybody wants to hear uh, what they would call, I don't want to hear religious stuff. Well, how many people don't have something that they're scared of, that they, that they need to address in their life? And uh, people are coming to you, that's even better. And, and so uh, uh, the, the Philippian book addresses that, the book of Acts addresses this. Addresses the fact that we have individuals that are in difficult situations. Let's pray that they take advantage of those situations. Uh, turn with me to Ephesians chapter 6, and I want you to notice uh, after Paul talks about, remember yesterday we talked about the uh, armor of God, the Christian warfare. Uh, he says in verse number 18, praying always with all prayer and with supplication in the Spirit, watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints and for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly and to make known the mystery of the gospel. You see, this is, uh, uh, Brother uh, McGinnis makes mention of the fact, he says, let us consider and discuss our responsibility to the gospel uh, this morning, Brother Rick. He said, too often we are satisfied in meeting with us, fellowshipping with us, and so forth. But Paul said he was a debtor, as uh, uh, we know that there are many, uh, uh, he was a debtor uh, or under obligation uh, to share the gospel. He did so in both 1 Corinthians chapter 9, Woe unto me if I preach not the gospel. And in Romans chapter 1, verse number 14 through 16, right? He, both times he mentions that aspect of being a debtor uh, to the gospel. And I think that's important. I think that's where, uh, why you have uh, the fact that he can say those things in the book of Philippians, why he wants those prayers, that utterance may be given. Notice with me in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. And this goes to uh, Brother McGinnis's point in uh, uh, relationship to uh, uh, the uh, uh, obligation that, I, that I, I, listen, I do it out of love. I do it out of obligation. And I do it out of fear. Those are three of the great motivators uh, of man. And uh, yes, I fear uh, for my soul if I don't do this. I fear for the souls of others if I don't reach them uh, with the gospel. Uh, I, I, I fear for uh, the church if we don't uh, uh, engage, if we don't love God enough. But I, I, I love Jesus. I, I, I love the church. And I want that message to go abroad. But I'm also under obligation to do that. Notice what Paul says here is 2 Thessalonians 3, beginning in verse number one. He says, Finally, brethren, Pray for us that the word of the Lord may have free course and be glorified even as it is with you, and that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men, for all men have not faith. But the Lord is faithful who shall establish you and keep you from evil. And we have this confidence in the Lord touching you, that ye both do and will do the things which we command you. Oh, I've got confidence. I've got confidence in you that you're going to do and that you will do whatever is commanded of you of God. 
And so it is important that we, we continue, number one, that we understand this personal responsibility that I have, this personal aspect of love, uh, this personal care and concern for the well-being of other people. I don't want any man, like I'm, I, I don't want any man to perish. I want all men everywhere to obey the gospel and to be saved, to repent, right? That that's our that we're like God. That's what we want. But in order to do that, then uh, then I must open up my mouth and 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 share the gospel with them. And so, but number one, I, I've got to see that as a personal thing. It, it's just like my obedience. No one can uh, uh, vicariously obey the gospel for me. Nobody can obey the gospel on my behalf. Nobody can believe on my behalf. Now, Jesus died on my behalf. He supplied what I could never supply. He gave what I could never give. Uh, he uh, uh, transformed the wrath of God that was upon me, uh, and he transformed that into my salvation. Now, he did what I could not do, but he will never do what I can do. That's my job. And it's not your job to do it for me. It's not my job to do it for you. It has to be seen as something that is personal in relationship to that. Uh, that's the most fundamental. I'm talking just, this is practicality here. It, it is, it, it, it's pre-evangelism uh, <laughs> class. It's not even evangelism 101. This is before you ever get to evangelism, is you've got to understand that everything that is a, a, a in Christianity is a personal responsibility. Nobody can worship for me. Uh, nobody can uh, uh, praise God for me. Uh, nobody can study the Bible for me. Uh, nobody can grow for me. Those are all personal responsibilities that I have in Christ. And, and so understanding that is vitally important to anything that goes, okay, now, so number two is the fact that we, uh, listen, let's let's up our prayer game. Let's, let's up our personal responsibility. Let's up our prayer game. Look, look at the way that Paul prayed uh, and the uh, uh, prayers that he desired for himself, that there may, that, that there may be a free course of the gospel, that the, that the messengers of the gospel, and this may be even a uh, more uh, uh, needed prayer today in our society as we grow further and further as a community, as a society away from God, we may need prayers that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men. Here are unreasonable. These are absurd men. These are men who act without reason. They act upon animalistic uh, instinct, uh, and uh, they will do harm to any good that is out there. And, and so we, we need, from a very practical vantage point, uh, by the way, we need to tell ourselves we need to have confidence. God gave us a responsibility. Therefore, we, we've got this. We can do this. It doesn't matter what this is. If God placed this in our wheelhouse, you know what it says about God uh, and his disposition toward us? He's saying to us, I know you can do it. You've got this. And so everything else aside, that's one of the things that we've got to know about. Now, Miss Mona asked the questions. I'm very thankful we have great Bible teachers, though, to help uh, us as novices. Uh, uh, we Listen, I, I'm, I, I am very grateful for all of the uh, teachers that have taught me uh, paying attention in Bible class. Uh, in in relationship to these things, uh, I want to utilize that uh, that Miss Mona said as as an opportunity. Paying attention in your Bible classes. I don't care if you're in the sixth grade class or you're in the uh, college class or you're in the old folks class, whatever it may be, the adult Bible class. It doesn't matter what class you're in. Pay attention in your classes. See, you cannot teach what you do not know. 
And so you got to pay attention in your classes. R regardless of what the class, the class may be uh, nothing about evangelism, but wait a minute, we're talking about evangelism. Yes, we are. But, but I, and, and in fact, I, I wish I would have been able to keep Michael on uh, a little bit longer. One of the things that Michael and uh, Michael Light and Mike Bonner and uh, Jason Rollo and others and I have talked about over the years uh, is the fact that we need to start with our own families, our own friendship circles. Uh, and uh, this to me is a very practical thing. It's not, it, it's not, I, I know that, I know that we can say, well, that's, uh, uh, that's, uh, that's a given. Well, it's not a given for some people. Some people still want to know, well, where do I start? Start with number one, what you know and who you know. Start there. You have friends, you have family, you have coworkers, you have people that love you and you love them. Why not start there? I, I, turn your attention to John chapter one. In John chapter one, uh, after that powerful introduction of the word encased in human flesh, uh, then we find a discussion about uh, John the Baptist and the fact that he is not the Christ. He is not the one, the Messiah that they have been waiting on. He is the one who's going to uh, make ready the people that will be prepared for that. But I want you to notice beginning in verse number 29, it says the next day, John seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Now, there's some further discussion that goes on, but I want you to notice verse number 34. And I saw and bear record that this is the Son of God. Now, wait a minute. What went on in between that time? Well, Jesus was baptized. The, the dove descended, so he bare record. There was a witness to uh, uh, the, uh, the, the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit descended as of a dove and lighted upon him so that John knew beyond a shadow of doubt this was God's verification, God's authenticity that Jesus was the one they were waiting on. So again, the next day, verse number 35, after John stood, and two of his disciples were with him. And again, he says, behold, the Lamb of God, as he sees Jesus. And the two disciples heard him speak. And they followed Jesus. Now, pay attention to that. These are disciples of John, and uh, they hear John's message and they follow Jesus. John was going to decrease. Jesus was going to increase uh, John chapter 3, right, and verse number 30, something that John himself would say. But notice here, two of the disciples, one is Andrew, and then the other uh, is Philip in the context. Well, uh, uh, in this conversation, one of the two which heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, verse number 40, Simon Peter's brother. Now notice verse number 41. He first findeth his own brother and saith unto him, we have found the Messiah, which is being interpreted the Christ. So what was the first thing on Andrew's mind when he heard John say, this is the one we've been waiting on. When he talked with Jesus and Jesus uh, uh, said, come and see when they wanted to talk about the Messiah. Uh, his first thoughts was toward his family. Here's my brother. My brother's a good guy. Uh, my brother uh, 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 is a religious guy. My brother is a, is a guy that would want to know this information. And by the way, whether or not he does or not, here's what I know. I'm going to go tell him anyway. I have found something 
that is precious to me. And so I'm going to share it with other people. Now, have we found something precious to us? How do we view our Christianity? How do we view the Lord's church? How do we view the gospel of Christ? How do we view Jesus Christ? Oh, I've got something, and I'm going to tell somebody. Well, now notice verse number 43. And the day following, Jesus would go forth into Galilee and findeth Philip. Now, whether or not Philip is one of those two or not, I, I cannot tell you, but I know that he finds Philip there. And he saith unto him, follow me. And Philip was of Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Now notice this. Jesus found, well, wait a minute. These two disciples found Jesus through John the Baptist. And one of them was Andrew, and he found his brother Philip. Here, Jesus finds Philip. Now, Philip, it says, findeth Nathanael. Do you see the finders <laughs> that are in the text? You got to be look, looking for this stuff, but there's finders in the text. So he says, he found Nathanael and said unto him, we have found him of whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Now, by the way, he wasn't taking it uh, uh, at face value. Can any good thing uh, come out of Nazareth? In other words, that's a that's not a a place that I would think. And Phillips just said, "What? Uh, come and see. Come and see." My my point is is simply that yeah, domino effect. I love that. Uh, uh, John the Baptist is preaching. He points out Jesus. Uh, the disciples want to. Uh, know more about Jesus as the Messiah, and that's exactly what happens. There is a domino effect that goes on. When you obey the gospel, you have a circle of friends and family, and uh, uh, then uh, your job is to start that domino effect. <laughs> start telling people about, listen, you wouldn't believe what I found. You know, there are hundreds of thousands of denominations in this world, but but I found a church don't believe in any of those denominations. I, I think I found the I, I think I found the church you read about in your Bible. Oh well, wait a minute. Uh, uh, no, no, no. Come and see. You see. Come and see. It, is it that important to us to share, uh, to teach, to preach? Uh, what we have in, in regards to all of this. Now, Jesus would tell us, right, in the Great Commission, whether it doesn't matter which uh, 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 aspect you're looking at it, uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John, or even Acts, there's five of them that are listed uh, in our Bibles just right off the bat. And uh, uh, every one of them is saying, go, go, start that domino effect with somebody. But now again, I, I want to emphasize you cannot teach what you do not know. So pay attention in Bible class. And, and then hey, you'll never believe what uh, we, we've been studying about. You'll never believe what I found out today. Maybe you're just reading and studying the Bible on your own. I, I know you're going to Bible study, you're worshiping, uh, but uh, you're reading and studying, and uh, you're reading and studying about uh, uh, John chapter 1. And, and you just, I mean, you're reading down through John chapter one. The word is in the beginning. The word was with God. The word was God. The, the same was in the beginning. All things were created by him. And you're looking down through there and you see the light shineth in the darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. Uh, he came to the world and the world knew him not. He came to his own and his own received him not. Uh, but the disciples received. And you say, you know what? Uh, this is, uh, this is, my cousin, you know what? I, 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 I'd never read John chapter one this way before. I'd never, I'd never picked up on this. Now, you can start a Bible study with anybody at any time. And so practical nature is the fact that I need to see this as very personal. I, I need, I need to pray in regards uh, to uh, the reception and the activity. I need to pray that uh, I be delivered from wicked men. I need to pray, uh, but 
I need to use every opportunity I have to preach the word and start that domino effect. Good to have Brother Johnson uh, uh, from the Marlin Waco, uh, Texas area with us. Uh, here's a man who works uh, uh, hard for a living uh, every day, a man that is a great gospel preacher, has a wonderful family, and uh, I'm sure he has uh, some very practical uh, items for us as well in regards uh, to this. But study, uh, get to know your Bible, get acquainted with your Bible, share with people what you, you've just become acquainted with. It, it really is. Listen, I, I think sometimes we make this, again, about programs. And number two, I think we make it about, uh, it, oh, it's way too hard. If I don't do it just right, uh, if I don't know, listen, do you realize the value of the soul? Do, do you realize that the soul, Matthew 16 and 26, is worth more than all the world? Do you realize that Jesus gave his life, the value of something is determined by uh, the price that is paid for it? Jesus died uh, for the church, for the redemption of humanity. Do, do, do I realize, the, of course I realize the value of the soul. I'm a Christian, right? Well, I should. Do I realize that those that are without the, uh, the gospel are lost? Yes. Uh, do I realize that, uh, uh, that this is the essential nature of the church? All right, so let's talk about some things. What am I going to preach? Where am I going to start? Well, again, uh, I want to turn your attention to John chapter 8, or excuse me, Acts chapter 8. I want to look at some uh, examples of how Jesus did this. But here's, uh, uh, here's Philip. And uh, Philip is one of the early disciples. He's down in the city of Samaria. He's preaching the gospel. Uh, he's called away from uh, that preaching to go into uh, the, the way to Gaza to meet a Ethiopian eunuch. And as he is there with him, uh, he joins himself to the chariot, having heard him read from Isaiah chapter 53, verses 7 and 8. And uh, so, uh, in fact, it says, verse number 32, the place of the scripture where he read was this. And he quotes from Isaiah 53. And, and the eunuch asked him this question. He says, uh, the eunuch answered Philip and said, uh, I pray thee of whom speaketh the prophet this of himself or some other man. Well, what did Philip ask him? Understandest what thou readest? I see you got a Bible right there in your hand. Do you understand what you're reading? I, I mean, that's what he's asking. Well, the, the Bible says that Philip opened up his mouth and began at that very scripture and preached unto him Jesus. You know, uh, one of the elders and I were discussing just the other night, he had an opportunity. A guy was uh, uh, reading in his Bible and knew that he was a, uh, a Christian knew that he was interested in Bible things. He'd been studying this. And so he just happened to be on Acts chapter eight. And so he asked him a question about repentance. What, what do I do as a Christian if I, I have sinned? It, it, you know, I've, I, as far as he was concerned, he was a Christian. So what if he sins? We were talking about it. He says, it's interesting that you're on Acts chapter eight. I'm going to begin right there in that passage and teach you what you must do. Well, he had to back up also to teach him what it took to become a Christian, but he also taught him uh, what a Christian should do. So he answered two questions in one. So where do we begin with people? Begin where you are. Begin where they are. Uh, that's where you begin. It, it doesn't have to, oh, well, I have to, I have to establish the cosmological and teleological argument for the existence of God. No, you don't. That's not, most people don't, don't begin there. I, I, it's not bad to begin there, my friends. That's not what I'm saying. But you don't have to begin there. 
if a person is uh, uh, religious and minded, most people even in the United States still believe that there is a God. After, after decades, after decades and decades of indoctrination with evolution and the anti-God humanistic philosophy of our children up, we still have a society today that tells you about the power of the evidence, doesn't it? That still, if they are asked, do you believe that there is a God uh, or not? They will say yes. And so it may not, we may be beginning at the wrong place. Now, do we need to solidify them? Certainly we need to solidify them. Uh, but uh, we, listen, if we need to be flexible, everything, start with your family, start with your friends, start with your inner circle of people. Uh, if you're going to start, start there. Uh, if you find somebody, one of the greatest evangelistic tools I've ever had was not our campaigns. Well, I love our campaigns, but that's not the most evangelistic tool I ever had. Every morning at 6 a.m., Monday to Saturday, three or four men and I would gather down at Whataburger. We'd have coffee and we would have, might have a biscuit, but we'd have coffee and we'd have a uh, conversation about the Bible. We would pray. And uh, I had more Bible studies ask of me just by doing something like that. Uh, I had uh, a denominational man uh, approach me. He was a, a Baptist and uh, uh, he was not satisfied. I had uh, personal Bible studies. With, he was in tears over his life in, in uh, Bible study. That approach came by him overhearing us study our Bibles together. I can't tell you how many people at Whataburger that worked at Whataburger who knew that we were there would stop by and say, uh, I noticed that y'all are praying people. I've, I've got a cousin that's in the hospital. Would y'all pray for him? Say, absolutely. You give me his name. By the way, if you give me uh, uh, the information, I'll be glad to go to the hospital and see him. Uh, but uh, two homosexuals uh, approached us and wanted to know what we thought about homosexual marriages. Uh, and I simply said, listen, you don't really care about what I think about homosexual marriages, but I can tell you what the Bible says. We had a lady approach us. She said, I've never seen men study the Bible uh, in public together. I've seen a lot of women do that, but I've never seen men do that. A visiting gospel preacher is in a gospel meeting with us, sat down uh, and had a Bible study with her uh, in regards to that people were approaching us for, for Bible studies. Uh, sometimes we are convinced that if you go out in public or you say a prayer in public, that's somehow showy and you shouldn't do that. My friends, Christianity that is not practiced in public is not Christianity. I know that our time is gone. And I want to say that I appreciate very much uh, the phone call that we were saying, always good to talk to Brother Michael Light and Brother Terry Jackson, uh, especially, uh, and I'm glad he's doing well. I want to thank you for all of your comments and all of your questions uh, during this week. Y'all have a wonderful weekend, and I will see you. I will see you back here on Monday morning. God bless. Have a wonderful day.